Precious Achu is far from a traditional center who sets screens and plays in the paint. That may have worked for him last year with the Heat and in this past summer league in which he averaged 17 and 7 along with a block and a half per game. But Precious has a small forward like ability to pull up off the dribble, defend the perimeter, and shoot spot up threes. Areas of his game that, if developed, will make him extremely valuable for Toronto. Today we're going to look at if Masai Ujiri got a steal with this pickup and the precious potential that the newest Raptor has. Over three quarters of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already and enjoy my content, help me get to 50k by subscribing. Also hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, now let's get into this. Summer League is nothing compared to the actual NBA, but we all tend to not take it seriously enough and forget that it's still the highest level of basketball on earth happening at the time. I know players like Kevin Knox among many others have dominated in it and then flopped when the real game started, but Summer League's made up of the best prospects in the world. Therefore, performing in it earns a player some respect, regardless of whether or not they choke in front of 20,000 fans come October. Nevertheless, Achua was feasting on the competition. He finished third among centers in scoring, two spots behind Denver's Bull Bull, who I recently predicted would break out this year. Precious posted 17 points, 7 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks on 60% shooting from the field and 50% shooting from three-point range. To be fair, it was a three-game sample size, but all that production came in just 26 minutes on average. Precious set big bodies one after another, rolled to the rim with reckless abandon, finishing off the play with tough catches in traffic, and fluid transitions into finishes at the rim. For his lack of experience, Achua has great hands. He seems to catch every pass, no matter if he's out on the wing or in the paint. It doesn't matter how much traffic is surrounding him, Precious is extremely poised, and a year of NBA experience should make that evident when he plays in Toronto. Those areas are all qualities that were demanded out of centers back in the prime days of the position. But after the point guard revolution, stretch bigs who can handle the ball and space the defense out with the jumper have defined the modern day five man and are leading the new era of basketball. The most valuable part about Precious Achua is that he can act as both a traditional and modern day center. He can be your typical Jonas Valanciunas-esque low post guy who sets a copious amount of screens and can post up on occasion. However, unlike the Jonas archetype, Precious is also quick enough defensively and versatile enough offensively to mesh within the modern space and pace NBA. Not only does Precious have a three point shot, but he can take it coast to coast in transition and handle the ball like a small forward. So why didn't Precious display all of this upside in Miami during his rookie year? Firstly, Precious came into this year's Olympics with Nigeria and Summer League with Toronto, carrying a lot more lower body strength. On the other hand, he came into his rookie year with Miami not being physically well-rounded enough to stay on the floor. In a win-now situation with the Heat, Precious was buried behind Bam Adebayo in the depth chart, and the at-the-time reigning East champs weren't the spot for Achua's game to grow. He was only given 12 minutes per game and only had four shot attempts per game. An unfamiliar situation for a player who was just his conference rookie of the year in college. In 31 games for the Memphis Tigers, Precious was the go-to guy on the block after James Wiseman was suspended, taking 12 field goal attempts and pouring in an efficient 16 points per night. He was a projected lottery pick, but the Heat stole him at pick number 20 in November of 2020's draft, only to trade him away a year later. Of course, Pat Riley has had a great tenure in Miami, but here's why that decision could be looked back on as a massive regret in the very near future. Achua's flashes of shot creation off the dribble throughout college, and most recently the Olympics slash Summer League, will now be given a chance to fully develop in Toronto. Precious will have the ability to dribble it off his foot and airball a shot off the dribble, trial and errors so crucial in development in which Achua couldn't experience next to Butler and Adebayo in Miami. 
But if those inevitable mistakes from Precious eventually lead to polished ball handling from a 6'9 center with a 7'2 wingspan, then Toronto may have an all-star caliber big. Just look at how guard skills off the dribble have impacted a lengthy player like Giannis Dedekumpo, and that's the potential ceiling for Achua if he keeps his head on straight and develops those aforementioned abilities. We're going to get to my player comparison for Achua and a prediction of how good he'll ultimately become. In terms of next season though, look for Achua to average around 8-12 to 12 points and a block off the bench in his sophomore campaign. Look for those numbers to annually progress because the Raptors coaching staff has a proven history of player development. We've seen Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananobi, and former Raptor Norman Powell make steady development over the last half decade. Like the number four pick in the draft, Scotty Barnes, Achua will be the beneficiary of playing in the Raptors system. The Raptors had an off year in North Florida, but back in the true North, Doug Ford County. What do you make of the entire thing? Well, what I make of it is that he's a disgrace, and there's no way to slice that. I can't excuse the kind of behavior that he has exhibited is absolutely positively embarrassing. Under the bright lights of Scotiabank in merely a few weeks, the team should be a lot more competitive, especially given the upgrades of their number four pick, Scotty Barnes, and their sign and trade acquisitions of Goran Dragic, although he said he didn't want to be here. He was the Heat's leading scorer in the 2021 playoffs. And then, of course, there's the man of the hour, the up-and-coming 21-year-old center with boundless potential, Precious Achua. If his handle develops, Achua's an all-NBA player, but to me, his upside resembles a hybrid Serge Ibaka. Precious has elite shot-blocking potential, but he's also more athletic and laterally quick than Ibaka. The spot-up three-point shot, which he showed all throughout college, relates to how Serge spaces the floor. Then again, I could see this man being a revolutionary talent like no one we've ever seen, given his combined low post and guard skills. Precious can take it coast to coast, pull up from the mid-range like a small forward off the dribble, and guard positions three through five. That's assuming Achua lives up to his potential though, of course, Serge is in a different class legacy-wise for the time being, the man's a champ. While the future, as in the next two to five years, is where Precious will reach his peak, I expect him to provide an instant spark in 21-22, likely backing up Kim Birch and earning a starting lineup promotion at some point. Clearly, I have a ton of expectations for the 21-year-old, but whether it's next season or in a few years from now, I think we're all going to look back on how weird it was that Achua was a throw-in to the sign and trade for Kyle Lowry. Miami needed to give up Goran Dragic to make the money work, but they could have found another player to give up than Precious. He's a tad small for his position at 6'8", but his length, instincts, and springiness make him a big-time lob threat. Additionally, Achua's a massive presence on the offensive glass. He pulled down 73 offensive boards in 2021, tying him with Houston Rockets forward K.J. Martin for the fourth most among rookies. The legit intrigue with Precious comes on defense. Achua showed the ability to protect the rim at a fairly high level. His 28 blocks last year tied him for 8th most among rookies, and the numbers point to him being one of the more effective rim deterrents in his class. He was also an effective shot blocker in college, swatting 1.9 shots per game as a freshman at Memphis. Achua's extremely versatile. He locked up primarily power forwards and centers last year, but spent around a third of his minutes matched up with guards and small forwards. The fact that over 31 games in college, Precious shot 33% from three-point range and 1.3 attempts per game shows that he can knock it down from out there with pretty decent consistency. That deep range shot improved by 20% in Summer League, but it all comes down to how Achua can polish those guard skills. Can he take it coast to coast consistently in the NBA? Can he legitimately create shots off the dribble in the half court? That's going to determine how valuable he'll end up being. I want to know your thoughts on Achua. Am I overhyping him or do you have high expectations for the Raptors center as well? Let me know in the comments. Hope you have a great day. Deep Flow signing off.